Hello, Rich Colvin again. And I'm going to go through an exercise and show you how we can make this basket weave pattern that I have here in front of, in my hand on the MDF Rose Engine lathe. And we're going to be using the curvilinear slide that I put into the video just before this one. So this is a, a nice pattern. You see it a lot in guilloche. And it's got, I call them these boxes. And this has three patterns within each box, or what I call three cuts per box. I, this may not be the right term, so forgive me if you're a guilloche expert. But we're going to do this in wood, and we're going to do it around the perimeter of this object. Uh, actually, a different object. But it will look like this when we get done. There are other variations you can do here, but we're going to start with the basic. And then you can, once you know how to do this, you can do a lot of other things that um, give you different approaches and different looks. To do those cuts, we're going to use... A 90 degree cutter that looks like this. It's a uh, we're using a, a drilling spindle, and this is just held in the end, and then it spins as you would expect, like this. So that will give us the cuts as it uh, progresses around the piece. To get started, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the cross line is aligned with the headstock, and, and I use a framing square. It works well enough for me. And I line it up here with the headstock, and then I can slide it over and make sure that it's aligned with the cross slide. And once it is, then I would lock it in place. So I did that off camera so you wouldn't have to walk through that with me. Not a terribly long process, but you don't have to wait. So now that we're ready, I've got a scrap piece of ironwood in the chuck here. And let me move this up so you can see it. That's our scrap piece of ironwood. And I'm going to move the camera, but before I do, I wanted to give you a few pieces of information. This ironwood has a measurement diameter of 1.739 inches. And we want to put 12 waves around it in this case. And I'm going to do three of those cuts per wave. And as I said, I'm going to use a 90 degree cutter. Now, all of that information comes into play when you are deciding how to do this because we want to get to having those boxes to be squares and they need to have 90 degree corners on them as we make them. So to do that and all the math behind that, what I've done is to make this easier for you and the on the MDF Rose Engine Library is the book for the user manual on version 3 of this system. And what I've added are these calculators and the first one we're going to look at is this recip for the basket weave because we're using the recipro reciprocation uh, function on the control system. So I put all that information in up here, and let's do that. So 1.739, correct, and I want 12 waves. I want to have three cuts per wave and 90 degree cuts. So now I just run calculate the values. And it tells me what I need. And what it gives me are the values I need here for the index page, the move page, and the recip page. And then it also gives me the depth of cut for my cutter based on the size of the cutter, the angle on the end of the cutter, as well as the spacing between each of the cuts. So we may not go down to 47 thousandths for this one, but at least it tells us if we, if we were doing a final cut, we would need to do that. Okay. So let me reposition the camera so that you can see what we're doing as we run these cuts. Alright, let's engage our cutter here.
Okay, we've completed one full revolution, and you can see the zigzag pattern that happened there. So let's disengage the cutter, which you could do by pushing the cutter back, pulling the cutter back, or simply pushing the headstock away, which is my preference, because then I don't change the depth of cut for each successive pass. So what I need to do now is I'm going to move it this time to the left, always to the left. And that's because I started on the tailstock end. That moves 76 thousandths. Now I need to index. And I'm going to index it in a counterclockwise manner. Okay. So. Now let's run another, another revolution. Okay, that's the second revolution. Now let's do a third. Again, I've got to move to the left, 76 thousandths. Index it, counterclockwise. <clears throat> and let's run another full circuit here. And what you see is happening is that it goes up to the left and it stays on the existing path. When it goes up to the right, it creates a new cut. Now we need to make the third pass. Again, we move. Index. And we run the reset.
Okay, at this point, now we need to make our lines, which seem to go up and to the right, the next set of lines are going to go up and to the left. So what we need to do here is we disengage the cutter. Again, we still move to the left, 76 thousandths. But now when we index, we index clockwise. Move it again, always to the left, index it clockwise. Move again left, index it clockwise, and now we make our last cuts for this series of boxes. Okay, now we need to go back to what we did the first time. Move left. Go back to index and counterclockwise.
right, last one for this direction. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of an artistic license here, and we're not going to make three cuts in the next one. So what we need to do is basically skip the next box. To do that, we move three times. Then we index three times. Okay? Now that's going to put us at this point where we can run the reciprocation again and it's going to create a blank box. Now we're going to go back and do the same pattern we did before.
Pardon me a second, I'm gonna move the camera here. Okay, so from this position, you'll be able to see what I'm doing to um, the, the keypad to be able to accomplish this. And, and I wanted to make sure everyone understood, this is not CNC by any means. So now I move. Index it. Oops, index the wrong way. And then run our reciprocation. This is one of those times in the Army where we'd be saying, smoke them if you got them. All right, last one. Move. Index. Reciprocate. All right, I'm gonna stop at this point, and then I'm gonna go grab the piece and I'll show you what we made. So here it is, you can see we've got the basket weave, we've got those squares where we didn't put the cuts through. So it's a beautiful pattern. And uh, as you see, you've got some options. If you can imagine if you were doing only one cut per box and you were using maybe a horizontal cutting frame, cutting through it, you know, like this, that you would end up with these points, you know, where the cuts, you know, at, at where the intersections are right now on this. And, you know, Ed's programming is just amazing. You can see how extremely well each of these lines is perfectly matched up. It, um, it, it's just a great way to add some new tools to your toolbox of what kind of patterns you can produce on objects. So, good luck there, and I hope that you're able to get something good from this and make some more fun objects. Bye-bye.